what is going on guys welcome back to another swift video in today's video we're going to be talking about a fairly simple topic that a lot of people don't cover and that is type aliases so here we are on apple's developer website they really don't have too much about this here aside from the declaration and the swift standard library itself but it basically allows you to alias one type or a different collection of types as another description type. So this sounds a little weird to verbalize. So we're gonna look at a bunch of examples and talk about why the heck you would wanna do this and where it really shines in practicality. So make sure you destroy that like button as always, helps out with video engagement quite a bit. If you're a returning viewer and have been following along with our daily Swift uploads, make sure you destroy that subscribe button as well while you're at it. Get XK ready, get excited. Let's talk about some type aliases. Quick pause before we get into the video. If you haven't seen it already, I am hard at work putting together iosacademy.io, a community where all of us iOS engineers can come together, learn how to build some of the top apps like Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram, in addition to interview prep to land some of these iOS roles at top tech companies. So if you're interested in the free and premium content to come, head on over to iosacademy.io and enter your email address in the waitlist form and you will be notified as content becomes available. That said, let's get into the video. All right, so we're gonna begin by opening up Xcode and instead of creating a project, we're gonna go ahead and stick with the playground. So I'm gonna come up here and hit file new and we're going to be working with a swift playground and the reason is is because it's easier to just talk about it with the playground we can stick with the blank playground here and i'm going to go ahead and call this type aliases and once it gets created and xcode decides to stop being slow just like that we're going to expand our window a little bit and let me also bump up this font size so we can all see it nice and large so cool so what is a type alias? So let's say we have uh, a type here, uh, and that type is, I don't know, my name, and it's of type string. A type alias is basically creating a new alias for a type which points to another type. So for example, if I wanted a type called uh, my name, I could just point this to string. And now what we can do down here is other name is my name. So right off the bat, what you can see is, well, all you're really doing here, let's see what we're doing here. Let's make sure that typo isn't there. Uh, all we're really doing here is creating another name uh, for the type of string and we're using that down below. So very quickly, the question arises of why the heck would you ever wanna do this? Cause right off the bat, it kind of looks confusing because under the hood are like, well, what the heck is my name? could be a class, could be a struct, but all it really is, is a string. So where type aliases really shine is the simplification of uh, types that are like collections or uh, even more specifically uh, closures. So let me show you an example. So let's say we used a tuple to represent uh, location coordinates. Now we're gonna ignore the fact that Apple has a type for this and core location already, but just bear with me. And let's say this was a tuple with a longitude, which is a float, and a latitude, hopefully I spelt that right, which is also a float. Now, let's say we had a function which uh, shows pin on map, and we wanna pass in a coordinate, and the type of this here would need to be this like tuple type here. And you can see that typing this whole bit over and over uh, would kind of get pretty uh, redundant and quite frankly, it's like not as clean and nice and not as swifty. So how do we go and uh, improve this? Well, let's make it simple. Let's introduce a type alias. So we can say type alias, we can say location coordinate is a tuple of float longitude and float latitude. The type here is location coordinate and respectively in the function here, location coordinates. So now if we wanted to pull out the actual values, we can say long is coordinate dot longitude. Uh, and similarly, let lat is coordinate dot latitude. So 
the important thing here, aside from all these warnings, because we're not actually using these functions or these properties, uh, the important thing here is introducing the type alias simplifies uh, what the actual usage type looks like. And it's also a little simpler to understand of, um, this is a location coordinate, which presumably wraps a longitude and a latitude floating point. So that's one advantage there. The other thing which is uh, of note is your actual usage of the type doesn't change. So if this function just took the tuple like that, similarly how we would say for the tuple, uh, you can say dot zero or dot one of the tuple labels, you can still do that. The only thing that changes is the actual type that's being used and what it looks like. So let's take a look at another example. And the next example we'll actually look at is one that Apple themselves has uh, baked into the standard library. So uh, there is a type called result and a result actually wraps a success result or a failure. And if we command click into it, you can actually see uh, under the hood, let's see if I can find it. It looks like they changed it actually recently. So this is actually an enum that has a uh, success on it and a failure, but let's click into these and let's see what these are. So it looks like actually, I take it back. So this actually is not a type alias anymore, but when Apple first introduced this, a result type was actually just a type alias of a fancy enum. But let's actually take this principle and apply it to the other really common example and that's closures. So let's say we had a function uh, and this function um, returned, let's see, fetch uh, recent visited locations. And let's say it takes in a user ID and then in the result, let's say uh, it is a completion block, the closure. And this closure is going to return void and the parameter of this closure is going to be a result. And this will be a, let me go ahead and line break this so it doesn't line wrap so we can actually read it. And this parameter here of this is going to be a result in the success case, we're gonna return a collection of location, otherwise an error. We need to go ahead and create this location. I'll just make an empty struct up here for now. And basically this, uh, this function uh, goes ahead and tries to find locations and when it's able to let's make sure my parentheses line up here looks like that looks good and we also need the body of course and in the completion in the success case we'll return a array of these location structs otherwise an error so regardless of the implementation here one thing of note is this completion handler is kind of long but this actually represents a type the, the type here is a closure that takes a parameter of a result, which is a success location array or an error, and it returns void. It's kind of long. So how do we type alias this? Well, we're going to create a type alias up here. And this is going to be uh, fetch location completion. We'll assign it that closure type. And here we can use fetch location completion directly. So one, uh, one pushback to this approach is, well, you don't really know what parameters this takes. However, when you go to actually call this function, you'll see something kind of interesting happen. You can pass in a user ID and in the uh, completion here, you can actually see that it picks up the uh, type under the hood that the type alias is masking. So if I hit this and just hit enter, it actually stubs it out for me. So you can actually see in the uh, block placeholder text here that it's a result with the location array and an error. So there's no issue of, uh, you know, be not being able to tell, well, what the heck actually is this completion handler. Um, the other important thing I'll call out is if you're ever in a large scale project, uh, which a, a lot of you probably will be at some point when you start working on this stuff professionally, um, type alias is to find out what they really are, you can just hold command and you can just hit jump to definition and you can find in the project wherever it's actually defined. Um, the true power of a type alias is just to simplify the amount of code you have to write, uh, as well as improve readability. So that's really all there is to it. Um, now, I will caution, don't go overboard with type aliases. I think once, uh, quite a while ago, I've seen someone do something like, um, let's say there was a field of what I actually started showing in the beginning. Let's say the user wanted to enter their name 
and it's just a string, um, it becomes highly misleading when you have something like this, because this implies that this name is something more than one of the standard types. Um, there's no really value being added here, right? You're just masking the string. Um, and it's partially subjective of what you want to do as a developer, but this becomes confusing um, when you work on large teams because the type alias type kind of expects, well, this might be a struct or a class, or it might be some other type alias wrapping some other types. So just be, just be careful that you make sure things are uh, understandable, readable, uh, and make sense from a, from a complexity standpoint. So that's all I have for you guys today. Fairly quick and simple video. Hopefully y'all found that helpful. Uh, if you haven't done so already, make sure you absolutely smash that like button as always helps out with the channel and the videos quite a bit. Leave a comment down below. Do you use type aliases? Do you like them? Do you think they're useless? I know some people that absolutely think they're the dumbest thing ever. So are you in that camp? Um, I don't know if I have a hardline personal stance on it. I think they're interesting. Uh, something that a lot of other languages have as well. Uh, if you got any video suggestions, leave that down below as well. Hit subscribe while you're at it. And the last thing I'll call out for those of you who uh, stick around all the way to the end of the video is um, I've been hard at work on my TikTok course. So this has been something that has been asked for so many times. Um, I didn't think I anticipated how much interest there would be in a TikTok course, but we're going to be learning how to build uh, basically TikTok. So stay tuned for some more info on that pre-sale information. Um, if you haven't uh, signed up for iOS Academy, head over to iosacademy.io. You can join the mailing list there. We will get updates about the stuff as it uh, gets rolled out and released and all that good stuff. So thank you all for the support. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next video.